I can't even be bothered pouring it out and mixing it in a fucking glass of I will take the large black one, please. Real female actors. Real actors. It, if they weren't real actors, what would they be doing? They'd be pretending to be actors. <laughs> be acting. Real actors. Real act. That might be the most ironic pair of words I've ever heard. <laughs> and you guys thought I wouldn't notice if you just stuck the word female in the middle of it. <laughs> Real female actors. Still a hell of a phrase. Less ironic than, than the two words. Now that we've got a paper trail to the source of the confusion. There's, there's a telltale ambiguity in the word actor. Uh, in one context it means pretender. In the other context, it just means agent, one who acts as opposed to is acted upon. It's interesting that you've gone with the phrase real female actors rather than just real actresses. Because that could close the door on the ambiguity, but open the window to another tangent. Notice the word doctress is, is, is not in common parlance and has not been for a very long time, if ever. It's well understood that gender is an unimportant distinction in a doctor. Same goes for mayoress, authoress, ambassadress, all words that have fallen out of common usage or have never been there. Stewardess is in the process of falling out of usage, which is a shame because stewardess is the longest word you can type with just your left hand. Thousands of people are doing that right now. <laughs> I just made thousands of people do this. You still do it, are you? You can't stop. <laughs> ah, you are mine. I just made you wiggle your hand like a puppet master. And I can go deeper. <laughs> I, 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 I tried to think of other uh, occupation titles that end in ESS like that. And, and yes, yeah, so I still haven't fallen out of parlance. And I've thought of three. Five, if you include princess and hostess as occupations, which, I don't know, maybe. But, yeah, princesses still don't want to be called princes. Um, hostesses still don't want to be called hosts. Notice these are all positions of considerably high class clout. Actresses still don't want to be called actors. Headmistresses still don't want to be called headmasters. And what's the last one? Waitress. What's so special about a waitress? <laughs> server, server is not going to take off. It's not going to take off like flight attendant did. You're pushing on it, but it's not going to stick. Think about it. Women don't want to be called servers. And they don't want to be called waiters. Because they don't like serving, and they don't like waiting. <laughs> That's what's so special about a waitress. Oh, and seamstress, I suppose. <laughs> Seamstresses still don't want to be called seamers. <laughs> for, for probably fairly obvious reasons. Actually, there's probably loads of missed. Whatever. Play the game in the comments. The whole "What's up with that then?" game, you know, you know, you know what to do. Fuck me, that was the weirdest tangent ever. Females applying for this role must be between eighteen to twenty-five. Males can be much older. So they don't want children or old women. 
Yeah, don't go over there. I think they might just be harvesting people. She should be wearing an apron with maybe a floral pattern on it to underline femininity. <laughs> Have you have you heard of Georgia O'Keeffe there? She made a single observation concerning convergent patterns in flowers and vaginas. And she painted a quite staggering, I mean limping amount of pictures illustrating that observation. She's one of America's most celebrated artists. So the connection between women and flowers is hard to cut some kind of patriarchy and it's not even arbitrary people do get identified by genitals and flowers are the genitals of plants the male parts are the stamen and the female parts are the stigma so to compare either a man or a woman to a flower is at once equally appropriate and not appropriate. The flower is a symbol that sexes people and unsexes them in the same poetic breath. And it's not just women who like flowers. Men have been known to be quite fond of flowers. Flower power was a thing. Ask your uncle. Your granddad. Fuck me, I'm old. And yeah, there's a, <clears throat> there's a lot of flowers in art and poetry made by men. A chap called William Wordsworth, famously very fond indeed of daffodils. And he couldn't even smell. Straight up, Wordsworth. Couldn't smell a damn thing. Still madly in love with daffodils. Even anosmic men love daffodils. <laughs> that sounds like a, like a mnemonic for remembering musical scales. <laughs> even anosmic boys, even... Even anosmic boys enjoy daffodils. Da, 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 da. Even anosmic boys enjoy daffodils. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, mnemonics never explain mnemonics. Or notate its correct spelling. <laughs> if you pay attention to my Twitter, you can sort of tell whereabouts I am in the video. <laughs> she loves being a woman, so she probably wears a push-up bra. Nice. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to see where you're coming from using the gender flip. He loves being a man, so he probably wears a push-up. Okay, so the only the only part of a man's body up which clothes are designed to push is uh, is the, the the three stooges down there. Um, he loves being a man, so he probably wears speedos. Uh, that makes perfect sense. Uh, that's as empirical as I can get with this apparatus, but as it happens, it makes perfect sense. Conversely, I'm not particularly fond of being whatever skin this is. That's why I wear baggy things. So I'm not on display. I would rather look like clothes hanging on a body than a body hanging on clothes. Because I'm not a barbarian, I'm a wizard. An orc wizard. <laughs> a dwarf in the body of an orc wizard. I'm complicated. It's totally true. <laughs> Get the fuck out of my head, you. Harmless librarian who goes over to the dark side. Topless. <laughs> what? A role that involves partial nudity? And a casting call which clearly stipulates it! My God! <laughs> Since when were actresses expected to sell their bodies? 
Ugh, yeah, see, uh, so this is why I didn't put much effort into an acting career. An actor with no creative control is not even a prostitute. It's just an expensive fuck doll. Or a very cheap fuck robot, depending on the market forces. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here, and I don't think I like it. Her role involves a short sexual activity, but nothing to worry about. Yeah, again, a lot of roles involve at least one short sexual activity, especially in romances! And if a role involves any sexual activity whatsoever, then the casting call must clearly include that detail. Too many production companies have been sued into the ground for springing it on an actress at any other point in the proceedings. You're complaining that these measures are put in place, but believe me, you would be complaining even more if they were not. And you are complaining about the intrinsic properties of the romance genre, but I get me the feeling you'd be complaining even more if we took it away. You, women want sex stories, and you are disgusted by sex stories that involve women. <laughs> and that might mean you are disgusted by the things you love. And, and, and that's actually perfectly understandable. Perhaps normal. Seriously, don't worry about it. But I really hope you're not blaming the patriarchy for shit that's clearly women's responsibility. LOL. <laughs> Jesus. If if Alison was here, she'd be having a field day with your face. Look at this shit. I realise I've passed the point at which you wish it wasn't happening anymore, but I, I fuck off, I run away with these things sometimes. Her scene will include being screamed at by a clown. <laughs> and being gagged briefly. Shut up! As long as it's briefly, that's good. Shut up! She's actually pretty, even, even with no makeup. <laughs> I'll give you that one, actually. That is completely useless information for an actress. Unless unless it, specific, unless it specifically means come to the audition with no makeup on. That's what it means, isn't it? Lead actress needed for film about feminism. She is moderately attractive. Yes, despite how useless it is to tell an actor how attractive to be, <laughs> you would be amazed at how many casting calls describe characters as attractive or moderate, moderately attractive or the like male ones and female ones i'm with you on this actually it, it's not going to weed out the ugly ones not at all it'll only weed out the good looking ones who think they're ugly fucking morons oh and i don't i don't know what's offensive about a moderately attractive feminist which way do we go from there to make it not offensive Methinks ugly feminist would be even more offensive. And attractive feminist would also be more offensive because it would inevitably be interpreted as attractive for a feminist. Yeah, I'm not falling for it. It's, it's impossible to describe a feminist without offending feminists. Nerdy type of girl. Nevertheless, she has a boyfriend who loves her. Well, that's not sexist, is it? It's nerdist. Unless male nerds have developed a reputation for being studs. Did I miss a meeting? Yeah, nerd hatred has nothing to do with misogyny. Don't you dare co-op that shit. You most definitely do not own it. Nor does anyone. Nor does anyone. Down Hitches. Starring role in a low-budget R&B video. Free lunch. Yes, music videos require extras, supporting artists, if you like, and production crews usually include a catering unit who's more than happy to include the supporting artists in the lunch provided. 
The lunch isn't the fucking payment. They get the lunch as well as the payment. That's why it's called a free lunch. Not a lunch that costs you 15 hours of waiting around and 15 minutes of performance. <laughs> yeah, again, that's why it's outlined in the casting call. People want to know if they're going to get lunch or not in the middle of a 15-hour shoot. When you're in production, there is no such thing as breakfast and there's no such thing as dinner. You eat that shit on your own time. So everything revolves around lunch. That's why it's a cliche to say, that's lunch, or let's do lunch. Lunch is like this Sabbath hour <laughs> in production. It's the only time everyone decides, okay, we have to actually put this shit down and relax now, or we'll go insane. Are you sure you're a real actor? A real actor should know this shit. <laughs> but yeah, if you're not a real actor, then you're really an actor. So I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. These only apply if you are a uh, slender build. You're already offended, aren't you? <laughs> As performance space is limited! That's bullshit. That is not even real. Again, this is not a call for a leading lady. It's a call for supporting artists. Scores of them. They need a crowd of roughly similar looking people to fill a space. And what they're trying not to say is they don't want to have to explain why a crowd of medieval peasants happens to contain one 300 pound land whale. It comes across as average looking, but actually has the potential to be pretty if she dressed differently. Okay. That, on the other hand, was indeed a description of a single female character and not a performance review for all women. Perhaps the female character in question wears nothing but flypaper and wet strips of skunk cabbage. <laughs> Maybe this is actually the plot you're describing. It's a fairly old fable enshrined in the likes of the Ugly Duckling. The Ugly Duckling was male, by the way. No one's ever held that up as, that up as an example of sexism or duckism. Hans Christian Andersen wasn't a swan. It sounds like the kind of thing a swan would say. <laughs> I got my eye on you, swan. Prefer an actor who is not thin. This is a great role for a feminist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I like you. It is funny, isn't it? <laughs> because, uh, because feminists have this thing about fat shaming. And they're, you know, they're champions of, of getting more plus-size women into acting and modelling and whatnot, because skinny women are patriarchy, see? So yes, a, a fat person is indeed a great role for a feminist. That would be autonomously following the ideology to the very letter, would it not? That would be putting your money where your mouth is. And trying not to eat it. Her cleavage is her best feature. You mean she's good with a cleaver? What's that? Context? That's right, there isn't any! Is this character a prostitute? Is she a model? Is she an actress? <laughs> Slightly overweight and considered unattractive in the face. However, she's naturally funny, so people do enjoy her company. Sounds pretty hot to me. I would not consider enjoyable company to be some kind of consolation prize, if that's what you're getting at. I mean, if I don't find you to be enjoyable company, then I don't really well care what you look like, do I? And frankly, if I find you to be not just enjoyable, but also funny, then I'm scarcely going to care if you look like the bloody predator, my darling. You are Getting it. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I didn't even say you could watch, bitch. Go cut me a switch. Who writes this shit? <laughs> do, you, do you know, I think it might be a woman. A woman trying to express herself honestly and modestly. <laughs> Way to shit all over it. Just so you know, you aren't being exploited. The director gets naked in all of his films, so you won't be alone. This shit is... 
I mean, that's for a porno, isn't it? I've yeah. been wondering how many of these might be for porn, but that one is either a joke or definitely porn. Did you just get casting calls for pornos and pretend they're for regular films? <laughs> you essentially just you just using basic duplicity to essentially go, oh my god, porn exists. Well, you ladies, particularly you Christian ladies, you've spent centuries staring up at a half-naked man in a bondage scene, and now you're pissed off that we have porn. That joke was very much shoehorned in there. <laughs> but, like, uh, uh, it's Julia Sweeney. Uh, she straight out admitted that she had some of her earliest sexual experiments <laughs> and explorations with the aid of a Jesus poster. <laughs> and honestly, I have to wonder how common that is. <laughs> and has been for centuries. And maybe that's why they insist on having the crucifixes everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Very loose theory at the moment, but there may be a shred of horrible truth in there. The female, a pretty woman for the man to fall in love with, extremely fleetingly. This is a very small, non-speaking room. Yes, fleetingly is the active adverb there. This isn't a main character. On the contrary, it is a character who specifically represents fleetingness fleet again what you've described there is an element of the plot or just an element of a of a 20 second montage in the middle of the film he falls in love with a girl bloody fire 10 years later blah, blah, blah. those scenes exist they and they require unique actors not every woman in a movie gets to be the goddamn lead you hegemonical harpy some of them might only appear for five seconds of short clips. Some of them might just stand at the back dressed stupidly, looking stupid, and that's all they'll ever do. That is life. You can't just play the woman card and then get the starring role, all right? I mean, you're in one of very few industries dominated by the surplus competition of women. Because for every man who wants to be an actor, there's like at least five women who want to be actresses. Or they call themselves act actors now. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Maybe that's the point. Lead male should ideally be 30 to 55 years old. Lead female should ideally be 20 to 35 years old. So, so how sexist was Leon? Hey, It's about a man and a little girl. <laughs> Even a 20-year-old woman can't catch a break in a story about a woman who's not that age. I, I, I think you're trying to present a pattern. A, a pattern concerning women liking older men and men liking younger women. And yes, perhaps there's a biological reason for that. I don't know, it's not my field. But you're not presenting any patterns. You're presenting individual cases with no context. That means taking any ad you can find, perhaps even the ones written in, in English as a second language, and isolating any part of the description that makes a woman sound unique. Or different from men. And you can snip it out and call it sexism. No, you can't. This is bullshit. Look, I know it's hard to be an actor, but this is not how you deal with it. No pay, unfortunately. But you will get to ride in a white stretch limo with a midget in a band. I'm pretty sure I remember a casting call for a band once that said you get to ride in a limo with a midget and a woman. <laughs> There's one crazy midget out there somewhere. Yeah, I think I know why actresses don't want to be called actors. Because they don't like admitting that they act. They don't like admitting that they perform an act that creates a noun and a verb. It's an old too familiar. <laughs> yeah. All right. This, this, I hope, is going to be my closing argument regarding the dispute between people who advocate for men's rights but reject that noun and the people who advocate for men's rights and accept the noun. I think I know where you guys are coming from. 
having having mulled it over for a week or so. At first, it baffled me as to how someone could tell you to drop a label, a literal label, and possibly think they're trying to help you when they are very obviously not. I mean, we've had this argument with the games press. The only thing that's dead and over is that bloody argument. <laughs> it's finally being resurrected again. <clears throat> no, you're not trying to help us. You're trying to get help from us by framing it as you helping us. This is what happened. At some point, you advocated for men's rights. And then someone said, what are you, a men's rights advocate? And you responded, no. Ever since then, you've been trying to convince yourself that this answer was true. When according to the English language, it is patently false. There is no brand or organization involved here. You told a tactical lie. And I never held it against you because it's a perfectly understandable tactic and a perfectly understandable lie. But it's the seediest and most notorious rule of propaganda. If you hear a lie repeated often enough, that lie becomes the, quote, truth. But if you can be made to say a lie often enough, it becomes so true that you have to start fucking with other people's truth. And now you're at the point well, you've told that lie over and over and over again, and it's pissing you off. Of course it pisses you off. You fell for the propaganda bear trap, and you've been flailing and gnawing at your ankle ever since. This is why, when social justice warriors talk about MRAs, they never actually talk about people who identify as MRA. They never talk about me, or the Badgers, or Bane, or even Vern. They talk about... Sargon and Teal Deer and Thunderfoot and Amazing Atheist. Why? Because they come straight in with you're an MRA and you immediately go, no, I'm not. And they've done you. They've made you tell a lie. And they have, exact, they have you exactly where they want you. They will keep making you say it because they love hearing you say it. I didn't advocate for men's rights just now. That sort of thing really isn't my bag, baby. And they will do that to the biggest names to whom they can do it. They leave me alone because I neuter their shit. I just say, yes, that's how language works. Your noun is not an argument, and neither is your initialism. Can we grow the fuck up and have the discussion now? And I get it. They keep calling you an MRA over and over again. And you've told the lie over and over again, and you're sick of telling the lie. So sick that you're reaching a trembling hand out to us tellers of the basic truths of the English language. If we could please start lying as well. And then maybe those horrid SJWs will stop hammering you with this you're an MRA line. You think maybe if no one on earth identifies as an MRA, you can get out of this by saying, no, there's no such thing as an MRA. And if you honestly think that's going to stop that fucking train, then your brain truly has been rotted by this lie. I am not demanding you stop telling this lie. So that's your choice. But if you think I'm going to help pull you out of this mess you put yourself in, if you think I'm going to jump into that lie with you, it's a resounding no, I'm afraid. You got the wrong answer, bro. Quit projecting. This was not an emotional response. Unlike the one you're having now. I will not fly an MRA flag. I do not consider it flag material. And under no circumstances will I attempt to impose on others what I consider to be the truth. But if you come to confiscate what I consider to be the truth or even recommend its voluntary relinquishment, then please do not be offended when your offer is soundly rejected. This is my gun, folks. This is what I have instead of a gun. It's, it's the most powerful thing I have. 
and it might be the only thing that could save my life. And it's called The Truth. And I've learned a lot from my American friends. The truth is my gun, and although my greatest hope is that I go all the way to my grave without ever having to use it, nevertheless you do not get to take it away from me. Not even from my cold, dead dick. If this is still not clear, clarify it. It is no longer my job. You have my answer. Auf Wiedersehen. Und Waffenkulo. Huh?